Okay, I think this is going to be a little bit of an echo, and I apologize, but uh, here we go. We're going to talk about PowerPoint. And as you can see, I have my whole PowerPoint screen showing here so that I can point things out as we go. This is a typical PowerPoint that um, usually my students come and they're going to do a presentation. And this particular one is about giving students choices when you're doing an online course. As you can see here, there's a lot of words. There's even some full stops at the end of things. Tells me that whoever did this just took parts of somebody's text and put it up here and turned it into a PowerPoint. It's very hard for the viewer to understand what's going on. And so it's um, a little too wordy, and let's see if we can fix it. So I've trimmed it down a bit. I would probably even get rid of this period here. There we go. And so now it's a little bit easier to follow. Allow students' choices, and then some um, brief statements about that. Allow students the freedom in assignments in their topics. Not too bad, but let's see if we can even make it better. Okay, what's the first thing you think of when you see a cat walking on a leash? You think of somebody tying a cat down, keeping them leashed, and not allowing the cat to be free. As you can see, I changed the title to Freedom. That's what we're wanting our students to have, is the freedom to explore and to choose. Down here at the bottom, you can see all the words that I had before in my text are now down here. So I put this slide up, and I can even sit here and read it. I can say, don't keep your students on a leash. Allow them choices of topics that meet their needs and interests those that are relevant to their goals and their careers. So things that the students are interested in are things that they will learn more quickly and more easily. Allow the students freedom in assignments and in topics. So if you're planning something, you can give them four or five topics. Choose one topic and write about it. That way you're giving them the freedom. For me, this picture brings all that to mind so that I'm not thinking back and trying to think about all the words on the slide. I see that picture in my mind and I remember, give students freedom of choice. So the rules here are keep it simple. The fewer words, the better. One author says only six words on the slide, never more. Now, I must say that I don't follow that rule and I'm not very good at it. White space. White space means that there should be a lot of extra space around the words so that people see exactly the point that you're trying to get across. And it should be big, around a 30 font. This one right here is a 28 font, but I think it's big enough. Different fonts, actually. Um, you know, play with the different types of fonts and you'll find one that you really like. Color. Now, most of the PowerPoint themes, and as you see up here, these are themes. All of these are choices, and excuse me, I'm on a Mac, so yours may look different, but they're still themes. And if you choose a theme, then a color set comes with it. The way to see that color set is when, let's say I'm here on words. I've made this one white so that it has a good contrast between the background, but maybe I wanted to change it. So I can go in here, and these are the theme colors. These are the colors that they've shown to match the colors in the PowerPoint theme. So you can choose any of these for your words. I would say keeping things light on a darker background, dark on a lighter background is the best way to go. So choosing colors. Colors like red really stand out. Save them for only those times that you really want to make a point. And I find that purple always gets lost, especially on a big screen. So I always stay away from purple. Okay, 
pictures. I like using pictures because I think they, they bring a personal interest to your presentation. They need to be good quality. They need to be uh, able to be, they need to be large enough so that students can see what's going on and you need to be able to place them where you want them. So this little girl is absolutely adorable, but I think if I were to use her in a presentation, I'd want to crop her. So let's crop this girl. That sounds terrible, I know. So in math, and uh, Word is a little different, I double click on the slide and I get this toolbar. This is a cropping tool, so I click on it. And see now I have these little edges. So I can bring this all the way into her. And you could bring it down or up if you needed to, but I don't think I need to. I might actually bring it in a little bit more there. Okay, so that's my picture. Now, how do you make your picture bigger or smaller? What I see people do is grab onto this and just pull. Okay, she does not look like the cute little girl that she was before. She's all stretched out. She looks huge and distorted. So that's not a good way. Let's undo that. If you see up here in the right-hand corner, there are some numbers. And there's a little check mark in this box. What that will do is lock aspect ratio, which means that if you change one direction of dimension of the picture, the other will change appropriately. So I usually play with height. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to drop it down to a two. Hit return. OK, now I have a smaller picture, but she's still, the dimensions are appropriate. She's not distorted. So usually five by seven is a good size. Um, seven wide this way and five tall. So let's make it a five. So I put a five in there, I click it and see how everything changes with it. And then you can take her and you can click on the picture and, and using the arrow you can move it up or down however you need to to put her wherever you want it. You can even grab her and move her. And um, then you can put your words on one side. So we cropped and resize. Those are two of the most important skills for PowerPoint. Okay, sometimes when you copy a picture in, it's not of very good quality. You need to check your picture at 400x or 400 resolution uh, percent because that's about what it shows up on the wall when you're projecting it. And you may have a picture that looks really pretty up close, but when you project it, it gets all these little squares. Those are called pixels. So this picture itself is not appropriate. If you can see down here, it says 108%. I'm going to take it up to 400. But first, I'm going to click on the picture there. And now we're going to go to 400 magnification. If you take a regular picture and you move it to 400 magnification, you shouldn't, have, shouldn't be seeing many pixels. That is a good quality picture. If you see a lot of pixels, it's not. So let's move it back down to 100. Okay, let me go back to our little girl, our adorable little girl. So we're going to move her up to 400. Okay, tiny bit of pixels, but really the quality of this picture is quite good. So I would say you could, you could keep this picture because when you project it on the wall, it's going to look just fine. Okay, the other mistake that I see, whoops, let me go there. The other mistake I see happening a lot is you have big tables or algorithms or something that you want to share with the students. So you put it up there. Now, as a reader, I can't really tell what's going on here. You know, there's some pink stuff, and if it was projected, it would be big, but I can't really follow it through. 
So you have to break it down by cropping it and guide the student to the directions that you want them to see. So first I want to look at, at the top part. This is a heart failure picture. And it's the algorithm you do in echocardiography. And you, if the injection fraction is this, then it tells you what to do. So then now I can actually sit there and talk to the students about what's on this smaller picture. The way I got there was to crop it. So I took the table and I double clicked it. Notice here's my cropping tool and here's my height and width. And then there's more down here. So instead of trying to cram it on the same slide, I move down and I want them to know about suitable for community heart failure service referral. That's all I really care about them knowing on this part. Now I can crop it so that that's all that shows, but I do want them to see that it's following the last algorithm. So I put that part in and I surrounded this by a red box. The way you do that is, okay, click on the table, and for me I have to go back home, and you pick a style, this is the best one, so I picked a rectangle, clicked on it, and then put my rectangle around the box I wanted. Now the default is that you get a rectangle that's dark, so I go here under fill, and I select no fill. Okay, so that's pretty good. I've got my box around it, but I want it to stand out. So I go over here and I select red because red is a color to make things stand out. And I change the weight of the line. So for me, I whoops, I went over here and I made it a four and a half point. So now I have a red box around that side too and it helps show things. All the other bells and whistles, the transitions, the animations, all of those other things, you can use on a rare occasion if you need to, but for the most part, they're distracting. So these are really the only tools I use when I'm making a PowerPoint. Um, to summarize, I take all of my words out of my PowerPoint and put them down here in my notes here it says, guide students where you want them to look. That, that would have been what the words that were there. Then I show the example, and then I read my notes. Or you can talk through your notes. Um, but that way, students aren't looking at all these words and listening to you read your words. There's nothing more boring than to sit and have to listen to somebody read something that is already on the screen. So, I hope that was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to find me and ask. And I will stop.